Hello and welcome to Bearded Veteran Photography Crate, I'm Mike. Today we're going to be looking at this kit, which is a 135 model of the Centurion Assault Vehicle Royal Engineers 165. It's a resin model produced by Acura Armour and was kindly given to me by the charity Models for Heroes, who supports veterans and blue light services in the hobby and I'd really like to give them a massive shout out for all the support they gave me over the last year. With that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at what's in the box. So first of all I'm going to tell you a little bit about the kit. The kit is based on the Centurion Assault Vehicle Royal Engineers 165 Gulf War and was first released in 1999. It's a resin model and it has now been discontinued, however you can find them online second hand for around £120. As you can see the kit comes packaged in a cardboard box with the Accurate Armour logo and a label clearly showing a picture of the finished model along with the scale of the model, the kit number and a brief description of what the kit contains. As we remove the lid, you'll see that the box contains a set of instructions and some plastic packaging. As we delve into this box, it's important to remember that this kit has come from Mods of Heroes. There's always a chance that the person who donated it to the charity has made some modifications to pieces, so pieces that are in this box and in this video may not appear exactly as they would if they were brand new. With that in mind, let's have a look at what's contained within the bags. Here we can see that we have the hull and the bulldozer blade. There we have the armour parts, the turret and the turret ring. Then we have all the drive assembly, the tracks, the wheels and suspension. And we have all the other small parts. Then we have the photo etch and the decals and some copper wire. Let's turn the package over, we find that we have some steel wire and we find the decals. Now I'll just quickly put everything back in the box and we'll start going through the bits one by one. Ooh, remove that. First, let's take a look at the instructions. As you can see, it's normal Acura Armour instructions where they're printed onto A4 paper and then folded in half to make a booklet. On the front cover we have a close-up picture of the model. We also have the company's address and contact details. And we have uh, other information about the kit, such as scale. As we start to look inside the front cover, we can see that we have some information about side passive arm skirts, diagrams, photographs, a few labels and some just brief descriptions. Then we have some photos on the second page. And then on the following pages we have the standard accurate armour instructions, which is just a long list of paragraphs of what to do. And this is part of what makes the Accurate Armour the kit for more advanced models because the instructions are quite difficult to follow. Not that I'm an an advanced model by any stretch of the imagination, which is why I think it's quite difficult to uh, just follow these paragraphs rather than seeing the normal boxes that we're used to in other manuals. So here we can see the uh, diagrams relating to that last page of instructions and they're really just close-up photos of the completed model with a few labels on them. I was saying the page we can see again why Accurate Armour Kits are considered to be for the more advanced modeler because the instructions really are quite sparse and they don't tell you how to put things together, they just give you a photo with some labels on it. As we look at this page on the right here we can see that we've actually got one of the few diagrams that you'll find in uh, Accurate Armour manuals and this one's for the brass fittings. But again we turn over and it's just a long list of instructions. Next up we have the parts listings and as you can see we have uh, identifying letters on the left hand side which is used throughout the instructions for the labels and then you have the name of the actual part they're related to. To be honest I think this should probably be at the front of the book because a lot of the instructions especially the paragraphs uses the names of uh, the parts as well and unless you're familiar with the parts then you're not going to know what it, you're looking for really when you're looking through the parts and that's all there is really to the instruction manual so uh, without further ado let's move on to the actual parts so first let's take a look at the hull as you can see there's lots of nice clean lines and detail uh, there's no damage there's no missed parts nice and strong it's quite heavy and as you can see there unlike other kits that might have the part number printed on them, accurate armor actually print the kit number on them for pieces instead which again could make it more difficult for beginners let's just move this out of the way here and then we'll look at the top of the hull 
As you can see again, some nice crisp lines, really well printed. As you can see, there's some really nice fine detail on this kit. I'll spot a little bit of flash there. As you can see again, there's no part number, it's actually sent out free. Now let's just have a quick look at the bulldozer blade. As you can see, there's not much really to look at. There's some nice detail where it connects onto the model. You see some of the rivets and some of the pins and hinges. That's about it, really. So next up we have the turret and there's a lot of really nice detail on this. There's a lot of casting along the sides and on the top. There's also a lot of really beautiful detail on the mantle. There are a few little seams here and there, but they should sand down without any too much of a problem. It is quite thick, but obviously you're not having an interior kit on this. And again, we've got the uh, kit number inside. Next we're going to take a look at the gun barrel. As you can see, it's really nice detailed again. It's recessed in the end, which gives a bit, a bit more realism. Uh, we've also got the base around the bottom from printing, which will probably need to be removed, either by sawing off or sanding, because there's no way it's going to fit in the mantle. And looking at it even with sanding and getting rid of it, then it's probably not going to slot into the mantle. It's going to have to be glued to the outside instead, with a bit of fill added to it to fill in the gaps. Finally for this packet we have the turret ring. There is a little bit of print on there but that's just to identify it as a Centurion turret ring. Other than that there's not really much to it. In this next packet you can see that we have the reactive armour for the Centurion. There's quite a bit of flash on it but that's normal for the resin moulded. So we can just remove that and then we can just clean the rest up later during the build. As you can see it's quite thick on the inside. Uh, the back of it's quite rough so that's probably going to need sanding down to make it fit properly. Next we have the Mimic Coil, which stands for Mine Interference Magnetic Induction Coil. Then we have the Stowage, oop, bugger, sorry about that. Where we've got things like sleeping bags, barrels, shackles, chains, all that sort of thing in there. That goes on the back of the turret. And as you can hopefully see, there's plenty of fine detail in there. Lots of things for you to paint and get stuck into. It's also nice to see, oop, god damn it. As I was going to say, it's nice to see some really nice, crisp, clean lines on this. And with very few seam lines, it should be really easy to paint some nice details without needing to resort to any scratch building. The height is, of course, providing I don't break it by dropping it before then. Next up, we have the Bulldozer Blade Ram. <coughs> then we have the left and right final drives with the storage bin attached. So a resin block that will need to be sawn off. As you can see, there's not too much detail on this, but the parts and where they're going to be, it's not really an issue. But one thing to notice is that the part letter on the smaller parts is actually on the block and not on the part like the rest of the model. Next up, we have the bulldozer blade arms. Again, these are going to be really fragile when you try and take them off the block. We also have the left and right exhaust silencers, which again are going to be a little bit tricky to get off because of how they're attached to the block. One quick thing I did forget to mention, it's with these armour plates, they are really thin, as you can see from the shadow being cast by my fingers. You do have to be quite careful with handling these and when you're removing them from the block because they're quite fragile and they can easily break. So that's just about it for this bag, other than the storage bin and a few other little small bits. So let's take a look at the track and the wheels and things like that. So the Centurion road wheels came in pairs, so they were two concave discs back to back and you'd have a row of them on each side. As you can see, they've put the pairs of discs together on one block so you're not having to figure out which ones go together. In this bag you've also got components for the bogies, so as you can see the small parts again. And then we've also got the tracks. I'm quite nervous about doing these because I've never done resin tracks before, so I'm going to have to look them up, otherwise I'll end up rushing into things and messing up the project, which I don't want to do. And that is it for this bag, so let's go ahead and take a look at the next bag which contains all the smaller components and the little intricate details. There's not a lot to say about this bag really, it's a hell of a lot of very small components such as smoke dispensers, uh, machine gun mounts, headlights, things like that, so I'm not going to go through every single part. Uh, you can see it's, it's all really high quality and a lot of detail involved in it, but there's some interesting parts where I could adapt them or I could even you know make my own bits for it and things like that, so it should be quite fun to build this one. Last but not least we have the bag with the photo etch and decals. So let's get them out of the bag and we'll have a look at them. First up we've got the decals, really nice clear prints, they feel good quality considering their age, you know the paper's really well intact, the print's still really sharp on them, there's plenty of details and different variations of the insignias you can use. Then we have some steel wire, which I'm assuming is to help put the tracks together. But then we have 
photo etch, which is the side skirts that we saw in the diagrams in the manual. It's in good condition still, there's no bits missing. Like I said, it's 20 odd years old this kit, so the fact that it's all still intact is quite impressive, especially with the size of some of these bits. And finally we have some braided copper wire. I imagine that's so that you can have towing cables and things like that on the vehicle. Then we have a piece of copper rod, which I'm assuming is to make an antenna or something like that out of. So there we have it, the 135 scale Centurion AVRE from Acura Armour. Is it worth 120 quid? Yeah, if you'd like making resin kits and you've got enough skill, would you get it as a beginner? Probably not, it's something you need to work up to. So with that being said, it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from him. We'll see you soon.